What's up Squidgy Slingers, Tradman here. Thank you very much for tuning in once again, it is really much appreciated. So today we're talking about advanced pole techniques using traditional window cleaning methods. So what do we mean when we say advanced? Well, advanced is basically describing tricky scenarios, obstacles in the way, odd shaped glass or tricky glass to have to deal with, things like that. So the footage that's coming up in this video is going to be looking at some different kind of styles of windows and also different scenarios that otherwise would be quite tricky trying to use ladders. So by combining a pole and the Mormon accelerator tool, we're going to show you today why it's the most advanced tool that there is on the market and how to use it. So enjoy and thank you very much once again. Okay then folks, so we're here at this job, bonny old Scotland here, and we're going to be talking about advanced pole work. Now you can see here, we've got a bit of a, well, I'm going to call it a conundrum, palava, a bit of a obstacle course. So if you were doing this traditionally without a pole, then this would be very, very, very difficult and also potentially very dangerous. We've got rocks and uh, slippery surfaces there, so we're going to use the extension pole because that's what clever people do. Okay, so... We'll get our carbon fibre pole, a Gardner SLX. Now we've got this duster attachment. Now, if you're doing a job that's every month, um, at the most maybe once every two months, you can use a cobweb duster to clean the frames. But if there's anything ingrained on it that's maybe needing a good wash, you might need to use something like the Mormon flick pad, an applicator, or even a car washing mitt. Um, what we'll do is I'll leave a little picture just here. Now if you put one of these and over the top of a six inch squeegee and then connect that to your pole, you can use that to wash frames traditionally. So you can dip the car washing mitt in the bucket and then wash all the frames, go all the way around and then when you've done all the framework, come back, switch to your, your Mormon accelerator with flick pad and uh, do the glass. So that's basically what I do if the frames are really, really dirty, but because these frames is normally just dust and spider webs, we use the uh, cobweb duster. Just run over all the framework with that because we want the frames, panes and sills cleaned and uh, to reach these traditionally without an extension pole would be rather difficult. So let's uh, be smart, be safe and use a pole, okay? Right then folks, so the first thing we need to do is choose the right size of squeegee. Now, if it's quite sort of thin windows or thinner windows, you'd be better with a 10 inch channel. If you're quite new to using a pole and a traditional squeegee, then I would recommend starting off with a smaller squeegee channel and then work your way up. For using the Mormon accelerator, which is this bad boy in here. So for reasonably big windows, you'll get away with using the 14. If you were to try and use a 14 on something a bit smaller, you can do it, but it just takes a wee bit more skill, a bit more time and patience just to learn how to use that. Now these windows here also have quite an abrasive rubber seal on the wooden frames. What we're gonna do is, we're gonna do this conservatory first, and I've picked the 14 inch channel with the accelerator handle. We've got our soap and our water on the flick pad. That's all we need. Okay, so because these windows, it's a bit of a tricky one. The bottom half of the window is almost kind of level with my head. So for that, ideally you would want 10 degrees. What you're aiming to do is keep the edge of the squeegee here in contact with the glass. So not using the flat of the blade or the top of the blade it won't uh, squeegee properly. We're looking to use the edge. So while you're using the squeegee, try and keep in mind the angle you're holding the pole at. So if we've got the pole like, like so, by changing the angles of the pole like that while it's on the glass, you're going to be changing the what's in contact with the glass itself, with the uh, rubber there. So like I say, we're aiming to use just that edge of the rubber on there. So we're going to pop it in 10 degrees and extend that out and uh, if you can folks I would recommend getting a carbon fibre pole because it's just so much easier to work with much easier on the shoulders and it's not too difficult to pop on a traditional end cone like we said before using the edge of the flick pad on the sides of the frames means that you won't bring the fluffier section of the flick pad in contact 
with the top of the framework. If you scrub up like that and accidentally touch the top of the frame with that part of the flick pad, you'll end up getting runs down the framework. You can always just soap up to within maybe sort of five, six millimeters or so of the top and then stop and come back up and stop. That's another way you can do it. But personally, I like to try and soap up the whole window. So I use the edge of the flick pad, which is less sort of fluffy and it just covers the whole glass pane nicely. Not the easiest window in the world, this. Over a bush as well and uh, extended pole. Gonna bring that down just a little bit there. Okay, so push and flick, flick pad over the squeegee. Now, first thing I'm thinking, I'm going for the top left corner. So we'll go for that first. Okay, and down, back up, across and down, and then just start your fanning. The hardest bit, well, the two hardest things are getting a clean top, making sure you don't get any runs or missing any bits, and also the close out. Those are the two hardest parts, especially when you've got a bush in the way. It's not easy at all. So the fanning bit is not too bad. See, now I'm in contact with the bush there. So it's getting a little bit more tricky because the bush is pushing my pole back up and it's making it very difficult to uh, use the squeegee. But with a bit of perseverance, there we go. And as you can see, I'll just bring the camera back there. That's the kind of level we're at. Okay, so we're at 10 degrees on the accelerator handle and the pole is pretty much straight. I've lifted the bottom of the pole up so I can close out properly. So if I was down here, like the pole was down, then I wouldn't close out properly on the window. So I have to lift the pole, the bottom of the pole up and apply a bit more pressure to get a clean close out, if that makes sense. Okay, so soap up this one. Okay, as you can see, the consistency of the soap's really nice. It's nice and thick, nice and slippy. You'll see yourself, look, I'll just use two fingers on there and it's just nice and slippy. No squeaking, no friction, it's great. So if you can, people, I would recommend clean bucket of water, add the soap to your washer and uh, you'll get this nice, easy to work with consistency. Okay, so cut into there and across and come down. Now this one's going to be even harder because I'm kind of going down the hill here. So as I'm going down the hill, the bush is kind of going up, if you get my meaning. So there's more of the bush in the way now. So what I'm going to do is I'm already in my mind planning where I'm going to close out. So I'm basically, I'm thinking to myself, because the bush is slightly less, well, not quite as high on the left hand side here by a little bit, I'm going to close out on the left here rather than try and close out on top of the bush there. So what I'm planning to do is come over to the right and then pull it and then close out. So we'll go for that. So there and pull across and close out there. And again, lift the bottom of the pole up so you get a nice clean close out. And you can see the great thing about this tool is this is why I keep encouraging people to try and use it. When that window is done, it's done. I'm not having to pop a cloth on the squeegee or on the pole and wipe around the sides. There's nothing to wipe. The glass is 100% completely done. There's nothing to do. So I can just move on to the next one. So, you know, as quick as you can blade it down, that's you That's you done, you know? Um, you don't have to worry about all the, all the detailing afterwards. And uh, I'll stress that when I say detailing, I don't mean that you don't have to clean the frames because the squeegee does not clean frames, obviously. You still need to wipe the frames, but when we say no detailing, we're referring to the glass. There's nothing to detail on the glass. By doing it the old school way of using a cloth or a scrim, you have the potential of leaving smears and also bits of your cloth left behind, little, basically what look like bits of fluff, like hair, very thin hair-like bits of material on the glass, especially when the sun hits it, it shows up. So the less you can touch the glass, the better. And especially with a pole, doing pole work and high level traditional pole work. Normally as well, what I do is I'll use my right hand at the bottom of the pole and left hand is up here. Uh, after a few windows, I like to swap over. 
so it's giving that side of the body a break. Now, if you've only ever used the pole on one side of your body, it feels really weird to, when you first switch over, to try and do pole work on the left-hand side of your body. It is really weird. Um, same with carrying a ladder. If you're always carrying the ladder on one side of your body and you switch over, it feels extremely weird to have to try and do it on the other side. But I would highly encourage you, if you can, try and alternate between having, for instance, the right hand at the bottom and left hand at the top of the pole, like so, and then switching it round, but also your stance. So when I'm right hand top and left hand bottom, which is usually not my dominant way I would do it, my right foot goes forward and my left foot goes back. Whereas when I switch over to left hand at the top, right hand at the bottom, my left foot is forward and my right foot is back. So I'm changing stance as well as changing the hands. So it's keeping the hips moving and your pelvis, everything's kind of getting uh, used rather than just one side. Because if you only use one side of your body, then uh, you basically wear it out and ha have what happened to me, which is your pelvis twisting. Because uh, I did a lot of water fed pole work and uh, only ever used it um, right hand at the bottom, left hand at the top. And I did that for years and eventually my pelvis twisted and uh, I had to go to the chiropractor. I actually had one leg longer than the other, slightly. <laughs> so there, there you go. So it's all fixed now. I'm completely, completely healed now. So, well, to a point. So you can see, nice and clean. All lovely, nice and clean. No detailing to have to do. And it's just that to clean up at the bottom. So that is, for this job anyway, the tricky section done. The rest of them are pretty straightforward. It goes up to all one level on the next bit. So um, I won't bother showing you that because that's uh, not too difficult. We're only going to show you the more tricky kind of windows or small thin windows and things like that in this video. So uh, on to the next job. Okay then folks, so the next bit we're going to show you is some high pole work. Well, higher. We've got this bit here. Now we'll leave a link up there to a video that I did about cleaning Veluxes on the poles. We've done that already, so I'll leave that link for you. But we we're going to focus on this bit here because it's a bit higher and it's also angled glass as well. So like we spoke about before, it's choosing the right size of squeegee to start with. So it's quite a big pane of glass. So we're going to pick the 14 inch channel on the accelerator handle, which is safely just tucked in here. We've got some nice warm water because it's quite cold today. It's, uh, you can see a bit of frozen grass there. So it's uh, not too warm at all today. But let's get cracking and uh, show you this bit higher pole work, traditional style. Right, so we need the bigger pole. We're gonna use the Gardner 30 foot SLX, converted for traditional use. So it's got the uh, Mormon angle adapter on there. Okay, and we also need our, our gloves. We'll leave a link in the description below to a video I did on the gloves. These are really, really nice gloves. Nice and cozy. So get them on. And we've got our 14 inch accelerator. Now just as a rule of thumb, just a quick thing. Um, when you're taking your squeegees out, do just give them a quick check just to make sure they're okay. You can do that just as you're pulling your tools out. Just make sure there's no nicks, cuts or bits missing at the ends there because that will leave lines. So just uh, keep an eye on your tools, folks. Make sure they're in good condition to make sure you're doing a good job. Okay, so that is, I know there's a bit of bubbles in there, but that's just coming out from the uh, the applicators and the flick pads. Other than that, it is just clean water that is in the bucket. And then we're using dish soap and putting some dish soap on the flick pad. Okay, so put a line of that there. Okay. And that'll do us. Okay, so we've got that. We've got our squeegees. And I'll tell you what, I'll actually take the bucket with me. Be a sensible move. And we're ready to go. And actually, we'll take this as well. Okay, so we'll go and do these windows here so you can see what we're doing. Now, we're also taking this pole here with the cobweb duster on it. Again, this is a job that's done monthly. Got a friendly dog around the back. Okay, so actually, we'll take this off first pop that just there and we're going to pinch the cobweb duster for the big pole for the moment. 
Okay, that's on there. Right, because we're just going to get some of the spider webs and things like that with this. Now, if this was a job that I was only doing maybe once a year or something like that, then I would get the ladders up. But because it's done regularly, I'm keeping on top of the frames, then it just needs a, a good dust with this. Right, so that's all the spider webs and dust removed. Let's take that off of there. Let's put that back on there. Get our accelerator. Okay, now because we're standing quite far back from the windows, just to give you an idea, I'll put this up against the window and then you'll see. Right, to pop that down. Now I'll just stand side on so you can get an idea of the distance. Okay, so that is the kind of distance we're coming away from the glass. So obviously the butt end of the pole will be up here somewhere uh, when I'm holding it. So we need the angle in 10 degrees because it's a bit more of a straighter angle, okay? If I was down there, I would be in either 25 or even 40 degrees if I was really close to the glass. But because I can stand quite far back, you can put the handle in 10 degrees to get the right angle on the squeegee. Okay, so what I normally do is I do the higher bit with the pole extended at this height. So do the top half first, bring the pole down a bit and then do the lower half with the shorter pole. So we'll show you this. So the first section is fully extended. The second section is just over halfway out and that gets us to the top. So to get into the corners, I turn the squeegee like so to get the flick pad right into the corner to give the corner a wash and then turn it and try and if you can, when you're doing the edges of the frames to use the edge of the flick pad like we spoke about before. So we're just going to do this top half here, and because it's in direct sunlight as well, I'm not going to soap up too many windows. Don't want them drying out too quick on me. Okay, so what I normally do is start from somewhere here or here, doesn't really matter, but I cut into the corner first and then pull down. So up, pull down, come back, then you can catch that solution up at the top, just there. And then you just fan the window. Now, if you're quite new to traditional pole work, start with a 10 inch squeegee. That'll be easier, easier to maneuver. Once you get a bit more confident, then you can move on to a bigger size of squeegee um, like this, which is a 14. An 18 would be too much overkill for this kind of thing. It wouldn't really work. But for a really big pane of glass, an 18 would be a bit better. Maybe commercial stuff, 18 would be fine for. But, uh, this kind of thing, it just would not be very easy to manoeuvre at all. So there we go, so that's the 14. And we're just going to do this bit here as well, the higher part of the glass. And then I'm going to lower the pole in a second to do the lower bit. Okay. Now, if you're struggling to do this, guys, it's just practice, honestly. Just keep practising, keep practising. Um, I spent about maybe two to three weeks just doing low stuff with this tool when it first came out until I was 100% confident I could do it just about blindfolded and, uh, and then I started doing higher stuff. So I'll give you an idea. Okay, so that's the highest point done. So what I'm going to do is just very quickly collapse the pole down a bit because I don't need all of that and I can stand a little bit closer to the building as well and just do the bottom halves. Okay, I'll just do two at a time. Okay, so the solution's nice and thick, nice and slippy. There's no squeaking or very little. <laughs> it's actually quite nice frames to work on this one, PVC. Not every job's like this. Some jobs are wooden frames that I work on with no rubber seals. And you have to be very careful on the sides. Now, like I say, I'm just going a little bit slower at the moment, just so you can see what I'm doing. So feel free to 
obviously rewind the video back and play it again so you can see exactly what I'm doing for this bit more complex type of glass. The tricky bit is really just the angles at the top. Once you've done that, it's a bit easier obviously doing this uh, square shaped section at the bottom. So there we have it, we've finished that glass there. So normally what I do is when I'm down there, because it's uh, I can reach it from hand height, I can wipe the top of that with the cloth. But that is it done. So it's dusted, frames are clean, glass is clean, there's no turn marks or lines. And the thing that's saving a lot of time, if you were to do this traditionally with any other squeegee, you would have to put a cloth on your squeegee or on the pole and detail all the outsides of the windows. So it's time consuming and potential of leaving smears behind. If your um, rag has a bit of dirt on it or it's a bit too wet, it'll start leaving smears around the outside. So this tool's cutting out all that. All you have to do is fan it down, wipe the bottom and you're done. So that's, that's why I use this tool. Okay, so we've got this tricky window to do here. So we've got this obstacle and you may be thinking for traditional, how the heck am I gonna get to that window? Well, I'm gonna show you. So first of all, what we need to do is get the frame dusted. Again, it's another once a month job. And uh, we're just removing light dirt, spider webs, that kind of thing. And as you can see, just a bit of debris there. Nothing too sinister. I'll get rid of that. Okay, great this thing. Time for a change really. It's been well used this cobweb duster, but highly recommend you get one. Really handy for maintenance cleans. Okay. Right, we'll get the rest of that with a cloth when we're done. All right, so that is the worst of the dirt off the frames. So, the way we're gonna do this, let's pop that there just now. You will need, easiest way to do it, is an angle adapter. Now, normally, obviously you put your squeegee on and the button clicks in there. But to try and maintain the edge of the blade on the glass at the correct angle, what we're actually going to do is untighten this. If you just copy what I'm doing, you'll, you'll see why. Put it two clicks down. So one, two, okay. Now you're probably thinking, well, that's for doing windows that are above your head. That's the wrong angle. Well, you'd be correct. So what we do, take that and we spin it around until that hole there lines up with the rest of the pole. So it's straight, okay? Now Mormon's gonna be coming out with something in the uh, not too distant future that is gonna solve this issue, but uh, we won't tell you too much about that yet. We'll keep you guessing, keep you waiting, all right? So what you're looking for is that angle there. So it's like a negative angle. So when we describe angles, we'll say positive is forward, negative backwards. So we've got two clicks, negative angle backwards, and what that is gonna do is allow us to maintain the correct angle for the squeegee on the glass. So we'll demonstrate. We've got the water and the soap on the flick pad. Rub that in, use the edge of the flick pad around the frames so you can get as close as possible without soaping up the actual frame itself. Okay, so that's the window nice and soaped up. Flick your flick pad back, and again, Wet your blade so the blade's uh, nice and slippy. We don't want any friction. Cut into a corner, either left or right, and do your usual. Now these are quite abrasive seals. They're chunky black seals. They're not the easiest to work on, but uh, with the right solution, it's made a lot easier. So just come all the way down. And you can see that the squeegee is doing a wonderful job. It's staying at the correct angle, what we need, and we can come all the way down to the bottom of the window no issues at all. So that is negative angles on an angle adapter. Okay, so that's how you would do a window that's like straight out in front of you. Uh, maybe about chest height or waist height, you use negative angles so you can maintain the correct angle on the squeegee blade. Now, this one's even more tricky because I can't actually get directly in front of the window. It's off to the side, but it's still doable thanks to this tool. So I'm gonna soap it up like so, use the edge of the flip pad. 
and it's something that you know if you're a traditional window cleaner and you just go around using ladders this would be a bit of a conundrum because you wouldn't be able to stand on that because it's quite flimsy plastic so you don't want to break it and you can't really get access to the window so you would only be able to do straight pulls which means then swapping between an applicator to a squeegee and then swapping from the squeegee to a scrim or something like that to detail the mistakes left behind but you can see with this tool it's two tools in one and there's no need to detail so that's three steps that a normal squeegee you would have to take three steps i.e. soaping up the window then squeegeeing the window and then tidying up the mistakes three steps whereas this is two steps isn't it so it's washing the window it's squeegeeing the window but, and it's also leaving no detailing behind so it's eliminating step three altogether so uh, that's why I would encourage you to give this tool a try and master it there you go done easy as that no stress no no sweat on the brow two windows done and what I normally do is if I can't reach the frame and I'm, I want to dry it off if I'm using a 10 inch squeegee like this is just pop your cloth on the blade like that and that way you can go right up close to the glass without touching it and just wipe that frame yeah get that black runs off of there horrible seals to work on really okay that's permanent mark that one but then you can just dry off the bottom of the frame and that's all there is to it really so uh, you can see the advantages this tool really gives you know so if you want to be the most efficient traditional window cleaner that there is going you're going to have to use the most efficient and professional tools so um, you know you're going to need a tool that's going to allow you to work on any window easily so uh, something like this you couldn't do with any other tool there's no other tool that swivels that you can wash and squeegee and that doesn't leave any detailing behind that other than this tool there is no other tool that it exists that can do that so there you have it a nice clean window and uh, no stress no fuss okay folks so now we've seen the footage what do you think leave your comments in the box below that'd be much appreciated if there's something i didn't mention or that you'd like to know maybe a question that you have that wasn't covered please feel free pop a message in the comments box below that'd be really appreciated we also have the tradman facebook page as well we'll leave the link in the description below you can ping me a message on facebook if you have any questions and we'll try and help you but hopefully that video has been of some use to you today guys thank you very much for tuning in it is really much appreciated and we'll see you in the next video you take care be good and i'll see you next time bye for now